Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today we will solve a percentage problem. Percentage problems that we've been solving for the last couple of days. Here's the problem, it's already on the blackboard. The problem tells us that a price of a stock, a price of a stock which is valued at $30 to begin with, goes up by 25% and then after that it drops by 20%. It goes up initially by 25% and then it drops by 20%. The question is very straightforward. The question simply is what's the final price? Let's find out, shall we? So first it goes up by 25%. Question is what is 25%? 25% of 30. Well 25% we know 25% means one quarter. One quarter of of means multiply one quarter of 30. How much is one quarter of 30? Well, one quarter of 30 is very straightforward to find out. Whenever, whenever we have to find out a quarter of something, whenever you have to divide something by 4, listen carefully, whenever you have to figure out, when, if somebody gives you a number and says, ask you to divide by 4, or uh, to ask you to find a quarter of something, do it in two steps. First find out the half of it, and once you have the half of it, take the half of the half. Half of 30 is 15. Half of 30 is 15, and half of 15, half of 30 is 15, and half of 15 is 7 and a half. It's 7 and a half because 7 times 2 is 14, and then half times 2 is going to be another one. 14 plus 1 is going to give us 15. So 1 quarter of 30 is 7 and a half. Or if you like, or if you like, you could just simply divide it by 4. 30, 30 has how many 4s? 30 has. 7 fours. 7 fours are 28. 7 fours are 28. After we take away 28 from 30, we have a remainder of 2. And that remainder has to be divided by 4. So it's 7 and 2 4, which is the same as 7 and a half. But of course, all of this was not necessary. It's quite straightforward. So it goes up by 750. So the first, the price goes up by 750. So it goes, it goes from $30 that we start out with, from $30 to 37 and a half dollars. Then we are told it drops by 20%. We know 10%, 10% of 3750, 3750 which is 37 and a half dollars. What's suppose, what do you suppose 10% of 3750 is going to be? Well, whenever we have to figure out 10% of something, we just move the decimal place by one spot to take a tenth of it. So it's going to be three dollars and seventy-five cents. Three dollars and seventy-five cents. And that's the 10%. We're not interested in 10%. We want 20%. We want 20%. So let's multiply it by 2. If you multiply it by 2, this side, if you multiply this side by 2, we have to multiply that side by 2. So it's 2 times $3.75. 75 cents plus 75 cents is going to give us $1.50. $1.50 and $6 is going to be $1.50 and $6 is going to be $7.50. So it turns out that the 20% of 3750 20% of 3750 turns out to be 750. So we were at 3750. We were at 3750. Then it drops by. Drops by. Then it drops by 20%. Which turns out it is 750. That's a drop of 20%. It's 750. And we're back to where we started. We are back to where we started. The question is, what was the purpose of this? problem. What was the point in this problem? What is it that we want to get out of it? Here's what we want to get out of it. Here's what I want you to understand out of it. Whenever you have a percentage problem like this, where there are two steps involved, or even three steps that tell you that the price goes up by 10% and then drops by 30% and then it goes up again by 40%, whether there are three steps or two steps, the easiest, the simplest, the quickest, the most efficient method in a scenario such as this it's not what you see on the blackboard. This was a very long and very tedious process. The quicker process would be to start out the whole process by assuming that the initial price is not what they tell you what it is, but by assuming that the initial price is just 100. And then do the same problem again. We're going to redo it with the initial price of 100. So I need the room, obviously. We're going to have to erase it. So what what happens? Because when you start out with 100, the calculation becomes very simple. First, it goes up by 25%. So it is going to go from 100 to 125, 125. And then we are told that it drops by 20%. What is 20% of 125? 20% of 
20%, 20% is same as one fifth. 20% of something is one fifth. Question is, what is the fifth of that? That's how much it drops. 125. We have to figure out the fifth of it. And once we figure out the fifth of it, we, we're going to subtract the fifth from the 125 and we'll have the drop of 20% because drop of 40% is a drop of a fifth. So let's divide 125 by 5. How many 5s in a 1? One? 1 has no 5. 1 has no 5. 1 goes and joins the 12 becomes, 1 goes and joins the 2 becomes 12. 12 has 2 5s. 12 has 2 5s. The remaining 2 goes and joins the 5 and becomes 25. 25 has 5 5s. So it turns out that a drop of uh, it turns out that a drop of 20% is a drop of 25. So we had 125. We went from we went from 100 to 125, and then we had a drop of a fifth, which is 25, and we are back to where we started. We are back to where we start. And that's it. We are done. The question was, what's the final price? Well, we now we can see that we we are back to where we started. We started out with a price of 100. We are back to the price of 100. Therefore, the final price is the same as the initial price, just like we saw a little while ago with the actual number. But doing the problem with the actual number was not necessary. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Same exact problem. Let's make it a little bit different. Let's say, let's say it uh, goes up by 10%. Let's say it goes up by 10%, not 20%, not 25%. Let's go up by 10%. And then it drops by 20%. It goes up by 10%. So we start out with 100. It goes up, goes up by 10%. So if it goes up by 10%, if it starts with 100, it's going to become 110. And then it drops by 20%. 20%, 10% of 111, 10% of 110, 10% of 110 is going to be 11, and 20% is going to be 22. In other words, a fifth of 110 is 22. Subtract 22 from it. Subtract 22 from it. And we're left with 8. 10 minus 2 is 8. We're left with 88. Not, do not dollars, but 88%. We are left with 88%. The question is, what was the final price? The answer is, the final price, the final price in this scenario is 88% of $30. That's all. 88% of $30, whatever that works out to be. Let's do the next one, children. Even this part is very simple. You simply take your 88 and multiply it by 3, and you'll have it 24 to 2, and another 24 and 26. The final price is going to be $26.40. $26.40 is going to be the final price. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. A house is valued. We are told a house is valued at $160,000 at $160,000. Next year, value rises by 20%. The following year, the following year, it drops by 25%. Question is, what's the final price? It's the same exact scenario as before, except it's in reverse order. Earlier we had a earlier earlier we had a rise of 25% and then a drop of 20%. Now we have a rise of 20% and then a drop of 25%. Let's do it out. It's, it's, you can see how quick and simple it is. So we start out with 100. We have an increase of 20%. So it goes up to 120%. 120. And then we have a drop of 25%. A drop of 25% in this, in this case is very simple. 25% means a quarter. Half of 120 is 60 and half of 60 is 30. So it drops by 60. A drop by, drops by 30. One quarter, one, one quarter of a 120 is 30. That's it, we're done. We're left with 90% of the original price. We're left with, we start out with 100% of the price. It turns out that as a result of rising by 20% and then dropping by 25%, the final price of the house is 90% of what we started out with, and therefore the final price is simply the price that we started out with, which is 160K, 160K minus 10%, so we just simply subtract 16 from it, we end up with 
5 minus 1 is $144,000. The final price of the house is going to be $144,000. Straightforward deal. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.